Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us yet again on NBS. This is the breakfast meeting. Thank you so much for sticking with us all the way from the morning breeze. We have with us today a team to discuss the National Skills Fair. It happens tomorrow for the next three days, uh, talking about skills in the country, talking about enabling those skills. And I think that that's where we should start. There are people who have more information than I do about this in the room today. Um, starting with you, uh, Christine Karunji, tell us a bit, what's the National Skills Fair? Where will it be? Um, thank you very much. The National Skills um, Fair is a forum that we have organized. The Ministry of Education has organized with the uh, Private Sector Foundation and Enable. Enable is the Belgian Development Agency. And we are looking at how we can generate debate on skills development in this country. We will have a forum that will discuss a number of issues, in mainly looking at the policies, looking at the financing for skills development. And then we'll also have an exhibition where we'll be having different companies, training providers, we'll be having different organizations showcasing what they're doing in uh, skills development, how they're improving skills for Ugandans. So we are, we've organized this fair and we are looking at, it's under the theme of skilling Uganda for competitiveness, productivity and self-reliance. So that we, we equip Ugandans, how do we equip Ugandans to address the issue of unemployment? We need skills. So the forum and the, the exhibition is looking at, at what are the different skills that are being provided and what can we do to improve the financing for skills development. Mm -hmm. prior, prior to the organizing of the skills fair, what was the gap that you noted and said, this gap needs to be filled with skills? Okay, um, skills development in this country has, has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. And the government Ugan of Uganda has put in different strategies to improve, this is what they call the paradigm shift that my colleague from Ministry of Education can be able to enlighten us about. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at how do we make Ugandans to have competences, to develop competences that are relevant in the labor market. And education development partners have been supporting the government of Uganda in these efforts that look at equipping Ugandans with skills, not just about certificates, because we are looking at competences that are required in the world of work. So we've been trying a number of different pilots, and these pilots have generated results that we have seen are making progress towards employment. And so we'd like to showcase, we'd like to bring different stakeholders that are doing skills development because uh, training happens in the training institutions. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when they get out of the four walls in a training institution, they get into the world of work. So how do we link these two? Because that's where the gap is. Mm -hmm. And we've been do doing a number of initiatives private sector enable and so would like to showcase what has happened and so this is an opportunity for us to generate a debate on that. Mm -hmm. We will have the guest of honor, the first lady and the minister of education will be the guest of honor to mm -hmm. launch this very important fair. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Safina Museni, um, yes. you work in the Ministry of Education. Uh, yes. You're a commissioner in fact. Yes. And this, in a way, many Ugandans get their skills through the education system by the time we're done with the education system. Yes. The assumption is that you're ready for the job market. Yes. Uh, why, why the need for a skills fair? Ah, thank you very much. Christine, when he was talking, he talked about how we have gone under reforms. We have to recall that in 2008, this government of Uganda made us to get the first act, which we call the Bitivet Act. And in the Bitivet Act, Together with the strategy that we have, we call the skill in Uganda strategy. Mm -hmm. We discovered that uh, educating or skilling Ugandans, we need various actors to come in play, and we need resources, including funding. We, we, we discovered that uh, the skills that we were producing by then were not to the expected level, like she, saw, she talked about the demand driven. Mm -hmm were not up the expected level because the budget that were put in place was not adequate enough to, to fund skills development. We have to appreciate that skilling is not theoretical training. Skilling is practical training. We need very expensive equipment. 
we need materials to use. I can give you an example if you are to prepare a order. You need the material just to train somebody, not to produce a product, but to train somebody to perform that skill. If you want somebody to do cooking, you need to get the real food and have it, you must have money to, 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 to purchase that food and then you, 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 you train the person to do that work. And through this, through this initiative, the, through the reforms, that's why we say that we need to have public-private partnership and also we need a skills development fund mm -hmm. that now we have contacted. We are happy that as government of Uganda, Enabel came on board and we have piloted this in the districts of Kalamoja, in the northern region and in the Albertine region. We are also happy that we have a World Bank project which we call Uganda Skills Development Project which is also piloting another project for SDF, Skills Development Fund, through the Private Sector Foundation. And that's why I have uh, these two officers with me mm. to showcase that this is what we have done. Mm. For me, they have presented to us as a means of education. We are happy. The Skills Development Fund is working. And now we want to show the whole world that this is the direction we are taking. And we are even very happy that as a bit of it, as education, we have a policy for, for skills development, a TVET policy already approved by cabinet, which is again putting provision in place for having a skills development fund which will be managed under the TVET council. Mm -hmm. So we are happy. I want just to tell the public that this is the only direction for us to take. This is what we have achieved, mm -hmm. and they will tell you what mm -hmm. we have achieved. The, 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 the outputs, the, the, the experiences, the, you will see, the people who will come to the exhibition, they will see those people who have benefited through the Skills Development Fund, mm -hmm. the employers, how they have benefited, they will share the experience. We want mm -hmm. people to come and hear from them. We, want, we don't want them to hear from mm -hmm. education. You yes. know, these days we are evidence-based. Mm -hmm. So we want them to hear from Yeah, and I, I think that's why we have Mr. Frederick Nabibo mm -hmm. on the table mm -hmm. today. You are part of the implementing partners for right. the Skills Development Fund. Uh, right. That's about 7.8 million euros. Right. For an unemployed youth out there, that's a really a lot of money. Right. Yeah. So what, what is it you've been doing with the Skills Development Fund? Yeah, thank you very much and uh, good morning viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we first of all appreciate uh, the efforts of the government of Uganda uh, and the World Bank that has enabled private sector foundation Uganda to, to reach out to the public to see that, yes, these skills gaps uh, uh, are narrowed down. Through private sector foundation in Uganda, so far, um, more specifically for through the skills development facility, we have reached out to, to over 40,000 people, uh, mainly youth and women who are unemployed. And uh, the approach is basically through four different windows. Uh, basically, there is a support for the formal sector, and these are majorly the companies that are employing most of the graduates or products from our training institutions. Mm -hmm. But also on the side of the informal sector, where we find a number of youth who are engaged in juakali activities, where there is a lot of gap uh, in the terms of skills. So when it comes to the, to, to the formal sector, who are absorbing most of the our graduates from the training institutions, we find out that uh, there is quite a number of challenges related to what the employers need and what those uh, graduates that come out of the, 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 the training institutions. Because of one could be the changing technology. Uh, you find that the technology currently being used uh, in the, these industries does not match with the products of the training institutions. So now PSFU comes in and other development partners and uh, our colleagues like Annabelle, really to see that there is that matching of the skills with what is needed by the, the industry. Mm -hmm. So through this also we have a, a program on the internship where we collaborate with the training institutions to see that yes, uh, students or the trainees get that period really to have a feel of what is actually the workplaces is expected over there. So through this support, we've really also 
supported quite a number of youth uh, through that approach, where uh, employers have also appreciated that kind of uh, initiative, and a number of them have been even retained by, by, by the, the, those companies. Mm. Yes. What, what are some of the sectors, the key sectors that you look at when you're doing the skills? Yeah, uh, currently, as we are piloting on this, we started with the agriculture because, the, as you know, this employs quite a number of Ugandans. Mm -hmm. uh, we have manufacturing, we have construction, and recently we've added on other three sectors where we found that, yes, a number of uh, Ugandans are employed in those sectors, mm -hmm. uh, and these are uh, transport and log logistics, tourism, and then uh, we have ICT, information, communication, and technology, looking at different various digital skills that uh, are being used mm. and required by the youth. Uh, and, and then my other question, of course, would be, for the people that are watching from home, right. how, how do you select beneficiaries? How do they get to be part of the process if they wanted to be um, skilled, for example? Okay. Uh, mm. All Ugandans under those sectors uh, mm. are eligible for, for this support. And how do they know about this kind of support? Mm. We, we make a call for proposals where we target those different actors in the different sectors, mm. uh, in the formal sector uh, and also in the informal sector. Uh, in formal sector, basically, we entice the, the structures that bring about a number of uh, people together, like associations, cooperatives, trade unions, uh, that we invite and they submit, co uh, they submit their concepts or proposals. We look at that and then we, we, we see. And also, I take the opportunity that yeah, during this event, the skills mm -hmm. fair, also there will be a launch for a call for proposals. So whoever is interested there, mm -hmm. please come. We shall be sharing information and see mm -hmm. how best they can be part mm -hmm. of this course. What, what, what needs to be in the proposal for those that might want to show up ready <laughs> that day? Uh, basically, what should be there is the they should demonstrate the skills gap. Mm. Uh, what do they really need? What skills gap they are? Uh, and uh, if they show that there is that need within those sectors that I talked about previously, mm. uh, then yes, we, we, we can consider that. That's the key. Mm. If they really can demonstrate that there is that skills gap, mm. uh, then that's the, the, the best area mm. that we, we, we look at. Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. So, Christian, to sum this up, where do we go up after the skills fair, or even when it's happening, what are the intended outcomes from the skills fair? Um, maybe before I say the intended outcomes, yeah. it's important that I say, okay, enable the Belgian Development Agency mm. implements on behalf of a number of education development partners. We've got funding from uh, the European Union Trust Fund that supports refugees and host communities in refugee hosting areas. Mm -hmm. We've got funding from Irish Aid that supports skills development in Karamoja, mm -hmm. and then from the government of Belgium, where we support skills development for Albertine and Renzori. Then we've recently got new money from GIZ to mm -hmm. also support still skills development for refugees. And also what we've done, or what we do normally is we issue calls for proposals through our competitive process and our fund looks at bridging the gap between the school the, the world of training and the world of work where we facilitate joint ventures between the training providers and the private sector to be able to provide relevant quality skills development looking at the different training methodologies that would be able to bring to develop competencies and skills mm -hmm. so after this uh, fair what we are looking at we're looking at the fair generating debate on what are the new approaches that we need to look at as we we, we evolve as we set up as we implement the new reforms that are coming in the bit vet subsector how do we handle the skills development financing because financing is a key issue if you're going to do quality skills development. It requires a lot of keeping really updated with technologies and the, the role of private sector. We cannot have skills development as a domain that the public sector is only participating. We need to bring the private sector. So we'd like to see the role of the private sector strengthened. And from the pilots, the, the private sector is really 
very positive, enthusiastic, and would like to build that momentum and see how they come on, bed, on board uh, in a more structured way that is really within the national framework. And then we would like to see uh, the quality improve. What is it that we should focus in? We should not really keep on focusing on the issue of churning out, but what are we churning out? The skills is what we look at. Mm -hmm. So after we look at really that there will be new, uh, maybe new policies, or not really new policies, but looking at the, f the, the structures that would be able to roll out the current uh, reforms that are happening, how do we implement them, and what is the role of the private sector. We'd like to see that technical training is really practical, because that is what it is meant to be. We'd like to see that at the end we have empowered public and private partners to all take part in skills development, so that we can be able to address the current issues mm. that are affecting our youth is, is it an open invite for people to come and attend the skills fair? Is it for everyone? Yes, we'll have an exhibition. And mm. in this exhibition, it's, it's different from the, car, the, the usual exhibition where people come and show products. We will have a demonstration showcasing mm. the process of acquiring the skills. Mm. If it's uh, making a product, say maybe yeah, we are looking at... Um, let me say probably welding. Mm. Then you'll be there to see how, what, it, what do you do, what are the processes. So we'll have it, the exhibition is very open. The whole public is invited to come and participate, mm. to come and sh see the skills that are being developed. And then we also have a forum. The forum has been, um, is alongside the, the, the exhibition. That one is on invitation, but we are at UMA, UMA Showgrounds. And the whole public is invited. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for the breakfast meeting. You've had it, uh, young ladies and gentlemen who are out there without skills or looking for skills on May the 7th, 8th, and 9th at the Lugogo Multipurpose Hall. The National Skills Fair will take place, and the exhibitions will also be happening there. So thank you from all of us at NBS team. Do continue with the programming on NBS.